What's up guys, it's your girl Sharon and today we're gonna to be shining the light on relaxing gray hair and my top tips as a hairstylist and how you can keep your gray hair healthier and relaxed all at the same time. who has been relaxing and taking care of clients, servicing clients for 29 years. I highly recommend that you go to a professional salon to receive a relaxer and any chemicals for that matter, even color. However, I know with the economy and everything that's going on in the world today, a lot of people are staying at home doing their own hair. So for that reason, I completely understand where you are. However, you know, me as a hairstylist, I'm gonna tell you to go to a salon to have your hair relaxed. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be shining the light today on relaxing gray hair, even if it's at home, and my top tips and how you can keep your relaxed gray hair healthy. So the first tip that I wanna share with you today is try to not relax your hair so very often. There's a lot of people out there that don't wanna necessarily wear natural hair, right? So if you're one of those people that are not ready to grow out your, your natural hair and wear your hair curly or textured, make sure that you try to prevent relaxing your hair so often. The more often you find yourself relaxing the hair, it can cause a lot more breakage, especially on gray hair. Gray hair has a tendency to already be wiry. It has a tendency to already just break easier. However, if you stick to a routine that's better, that's best for you based on your hairstyle. Now, for example, if you have shorter hair like mine, and I relax my hair at least every six to eight weeks. And the reason why I relax it every six to eight weeks is because I wear my hair super short, probably about an inch most of the time, an inch to two inches. So what I find myself doing every time it's time for a relaxer, I'm cutting off the, the old hair that has already been texturized because I like to texturize my hair, which means using the same chemical, except for when you texturize the hair, you're basically just loosening up your curl pattern. So maybe you are willing to kind of wear your natural hair, but you just want to have a looser curl pattern. So a relaxer may be for you. So whatever that signature look is for you, my tip number one is try to prevent relaxing the hair too often. In order to keep it healthy, in order to keep your hair from over-processing and breaking off. Want to learn more tips about how to look good with gray hair? Then make sure you click the link below and download our free PDF of how you can look good with gray hair. So the second tip I have for you is try to texturize the hair as opposed to getting it bone straight. So first of all, a texturizer is using the same exact chemical that you would if you were to say relax your hair. The difference is, is that you're not leaving the relaxer in the length of time that you would leave it in to actually straighten the hair. So this particular technique actually gives you two options to have a little bit more flexibility with your hair. So for instance, if you're wearing your hair short, medium, or longer, texturizing your hair, leaving a little bit more texture in your hair, allows you to have just a little bit of curl to your hair so you can wear it either curly or maybe even wavy, but it's still a little bit looser than your naturally tight curl or your naturally wavy curl. So then on the other end, if you're ready to blow dry that hair and you wanna wear it like a totally relaxed look, then a texturizer gives you that option and it would also keep that style a little bit longer because the hair is looser, the hair has been texturized with the relaxer chemical. So my second tip again is try not to wear the hair so bone straight, try to just texturize the hair. And that would just be you combing the hair through, especially if your hair is short. You can see right here where I'm just combing my relaxer through my hair so as to not completely and totally straighten the hair, but just to loosen up a natural curl pattern. I have several different textures of hair, and like we all do, I have um, very loose in the back around my neckline is very wavy, and the middle, oh my God, that stuff is very kinky. And then the front, it's kind of like a mixture of the two. So it's kind of like really, really interesting how, you know, when I'm texturizing it, and I'm only leaving it in like 10 to 12 minutes because my, again, gray hair has a tendency to be a little bit wiry, so, 
for that reason, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for my hair to kind of loosen up. So that is my second tip for you. After rinsing, I'm gonna let you get a good look at it. And if you notice, it still has texture in it. It's not like bone straight sticking to my head. So it turned out perfect. This is exactly the way I like it. Really, I can just rock, rock it. I can wear it exactly like it is right now. It's, it's a cute look just like this. My very third tip is to make sure you keep the hair moisturized. Now, a lot of times we're using products where we're just running it through the hair, we're using conditioners where we're just running it through the hair, you're using shampoos and conditioners that are all in one, now that's a no-no. You need to use one shampoo, a moisturizing shampoo, and you need a moisturizing conditioner. Now for me and my clients, I do use a full line of Design Essentials. Well, most, not all the products I use is Design Essentials, but I love Design Essentials Moisturizing Shampoo and Conditioner. These are those two options right here. There are a lot of moisturizing shampoos and conditioners out there, and I'm sure that you have your favorite. But make sure that you really moisturize the hair. Make sure that you actually condition the hair, not just run the conditioner through. A lot of times what I do for my clients, if you don't have a steam cap at home, you can take a wet towel and put it inside of a plastic cap, place it in the microwave for like 30 seconds to 45 seconds, heat up that towel, and then when you take it out of the microwave, you can actually place the towel over your hair after you, after you put the conditioner on and then just place your plastic cap on. Now you can sit with this for like 10 to 15 minutes, you know, and the heat from the towel will actually help to steam and create a little bit of more heat and moisturizing that hair a little bit more. However, if you have a steamer and or if you have a dryer, then you can use the same action with those two as well. Everybody's texture is different. Some people need a little bit more weight to their conditioner. Some people with, with lighter, with heavier textures or more kinkier textures. And if you have more wavy texture like mine, it doesn't take a lot to moisturize my hair, but my hair is not thick as some of these thicker head of hairs that I see um, within my clients and with gray hair. In addition to your shampoos and conditioners, you should be using some type of leave-in moisturizer every single day or as needed. But make sure those products are actually moisturizing your hair to the point where the hair doesn't look dry and or feel dry. I hope you are getting value out of these tips. If you have tips that you want to share, leave a comment in the section below and share those comments and those tips that you might have for gray hair and relaxer with the community. So the fourth tip that I have for you, which I love because um, it really gives my hair that sheen and that shine that I want, and every time I relax my hair, I actually use the AG Purple Hair Mask. One thing that you will notice when you relax gray hair is I'm sure you all are seeing the very, very subtle yellow tone that I have to my hair. I'm gonna normalize it twice with the normalizing shampoo. And then I'm gonna give myself one purple shampoo and then the purple mask. I'll be back. Neutralizing shampoos and or normalizing shampoo, which is, you know, that shampoo that's usually yellow that you use after a relaxer. Now there are some relaxers that are specifically for relaxed hair. And they say that because um, one example is gentle treatment. I don't use gentle treatment. I'm normally using Mizani because I use Mizani for my clients um, if they're gray hair or not. But the reason why they say it's for relaxed hair, you're still gonna get that yellowing to the hair. However, after you neutralize the hair, they have a special white out conditioner that you use after you neutralize the hair. But th there are other products on the market where you don't have to necessarily purchase the gentle treatment relaxer for gray hair because the, the thing that makes it really different is just that they include that yellowing out conditioner that you use after the relaxer. But you can use this particular conditioner right here that will actually do the same thing if you're not using the yellow out conditioner from um, that particular relaxer. In addition to the purple hair mask, I'm also when needed using the yellow out conditioner. But my favorite for that sheen, for that extra added glow and gloss, 
and vibrancy to my gray hair. I love the AG Hair Purple Mask. I'll leave a link below as to where you can purchase the AG Hair Purple Mask. Normally the mask, I only do maybe like every six weeks or every eight weeks, depending on how far I go in between my texturizers. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out and come back and let you see. Tip number five. If you are actually curling your hair with curling irons or blow drying your hair, you know that that extra added heat can cause breakage on your gray hair. So make sure that you're using your irons, your flat irons, your curling irons, and if you happen to be using curling irons from the stove, you know, the professional stove that most hairstylists use, that they, stick the curling iron, they stick the curling irons inside, especially if you're going to a salon that are using those particular irons, then you want to make sure that that heat is at a moderate heat setting for your hair. You want to make sure that your irons are a moderate heat setting for your hair. You can actually just heat the heat your irons up at a, at a very high temperature and let them heat up, like preheat them. And then when you are about to use them to curl your hair, your medium, short, or long hair, then you can turn the heat down. Say for instance, you start about a number 10 to preheat the curling iron or the flat iron, whatever heat um, tool that you're using. When you're about to use it on your hair, make sure you just turn it down to like a level six and make sure that it's doing the job but it's actually not singeing your hair. And what singe means is burning your hair. What happens is if the heating tool that you're using is too hot, it's gonna actually burn the hair. So you're gonna find that in those certain areas, you're gonna have a little yellow singe on the hair, which means that that white hair has actually been burned. And you wanna really watch out for that. Make sure you're using some type of product um, heat styling tool that you use on the hair prior to actually curling your hair and that will help to prevent the hair from breaking. It would also help prevent the hair from um, heat damage as well. Number six, now this is probably one of my very favorite tips on how to take care of gray, relaxed hair. You need an amazing cut. Like, I'm a cutter, I'm a colorer. A great cut is so important. And you can watch some of these videos right here to see some of the buzz cuts and the shorter haircuts that I've done on gray hair. And so find you a professional, even if you're relaxing your hair at home, which you know, I already said, I recommend you go to a professional, but if you happen to be relaxing your hair at home, make sure that you are going to a professional hairstylist. Check them out, you know, go sit and watch them if that is an option for you. And, or get a great recommendation for a friend or somebody you walking down the street, stop them, ask them who cut their hair. Because a haircut, what I learned in school years ago is that a haircut is the basis of any hairstyle. Once you have a great cut, there's not a lot of curling to do. There's not a lot of styling to do. And I even tell my medium to long hair clients, you have to have a great cut. Even your ponytail even looks better with a great cut, I always tell them. So it's, it's less curling, like if you look at my hair, I don't have a lot of curl, I don't have any curls. And all I did was um, just mold my hair with a little leave-in conditioner and a little foam, and that's it. So I don't have to do a lot to my hair. I don't have to curl my hair with the little tiny curls. If that's for you, that's for you, that's fine. I'm not knocking that, but I love a free-flowing look with my hair. And to be able to not have to put any heat just maybe to put a little bit of moisturizer in it. What I do is I love, love, love shower-ready hair. I jump out the shower, I put a leave-in conditioner on it, and just go. And so that um, is really great if you're texturizing. Remember those options that I mentioned earlier? If you're texturizing and you're not getting it bone straight, you can have the option to have that shower-ready hair. If your short hair is short, medium, or long, really, if it's long and you've just texturized and you still have a little wave or a little curl pattern to your hair, you can just have a shower ready look or a wash and go type of look. So yes, make sure that you have a great cut to start your hairstyle. And all your hairstyle days, trust me, will be a lot easier if you start your amazing, your fly, your sexy look with an amazing cut first. The seventh tip is make sure that you sleep on a satin, pillowcase or either wear a satin bonnet. That's gonna really keep the moisture in your hair, especially if your hair is medium to long. For me, 
with shorter hair because I'm constantly cutting it off and, and just re kind of rinse and repeat with the cutting and the texture. I don't always sleep on a satin pillowcase, for, but for those of you who are trying to really grow out your hair, I recommend that you sleep either on a satin pillowcase wear a satin cap or either a satin silk scarf. That will really help keep the moisturizer in your hair and prevent it from getting extra dry, which actually um, causes breakage, especially with gray hair. The eighth tip I have for you is to shampoo your hair at least every one to two weeks. And if you go two weeks, maybe just do a co-wash in between. Some of you are working out, um, you might sweat in your head a lot, and which causes a lot of buildup especially if you're adding product to your hair. So just make sure that you're shampooing your hair at least every one to two weeks. And if it is every two weeks, then make sure that you're actually um, doing maybe a co-wash in between. So make sure you're, you're rinsing and maybe adding a moisturizing conditioner to take you through that span of two to every three weeks. And some people go at least a month without shampooing their hair, especially if you're natural. But I guarantee that in between that month that you shampoo, you're actually doing some type of co-wash to rinse the excess um, sweat and, and um, products from your hair or doing some type of cleansing um, conditioner um, in between your shampooing. Now the product that I love to use in between my relaxers to keep that, that yellow cast out of my hair is the Purple Hair Shampoo and Conditioner for Gray Hair. And this product right here, I love um, in addition to the mask. Again, the mask I probably only use, only use every other month, but these particular two right here, the shampoo and conditioner, I use them like probably as needed. So not maybe every shampoo and conditioner, actually keep these on deck as maintenance. Whenever I see that yellow from um, any cast on my hair, sometimes if you have a tendency to wear makeup, and you're putting powder on your face or you're using a bronzer, sometimes those little particles have a tendency to get in your hair and kind of dust your hair. But usually when you're shampooing your hair, it'll shampoo right out and rinse right out. But if you find that you're getting that extra added um, cast in between your relaxers, these two are amazing products to keep on deck when you're shampooing and conditioning. And any other moisturizing shampoo and conditioner that you have and that you love. And voila, I am back. After rinsing the mask, you can see no yellow in the hair. Still a lot of texture in the hair. And I'm just gonna take my favorite leave-in conditioner and just spray it on my hair. It's the It's a 10 leave-in. I love the keratin treated hair because I do a lot of keratin treatments. So, but I love it on my hair. In the next segment, I'll show you exactly what it looks like when it's styled. to connect with other like-minded gray hair divas just like you, be sure to join our private Facebook group called Grown Girls Go Gray. You can find all the links to everything I've mentioned to you in this video in the description section below. We just started our group about a month ago and we're so excited we have our monthly live sessions. And this month we had a um, professional makeup artist and he spoke about skincare and makeup for gray hair women. For more videos in the upkeep of your gray hair, how to keep it shiny, how to keep it vibrant, make sure you watch this video next. And until next time guys, take care, go gray, be chic.